to try and tell you how I think some of the problems in science fiction time travel movies can be avoided. You've probably seen Back to the Future, right? Where the guy goes back in time and the problem is that his parents don't get together and so he's got to try and fix that, otherwise he will have ceased to exist. The problem, of course, is that if he never existed, he would never have gone back in time and he would never have prevented his parents from meeting, in which case he would exist. So it's a complete paradox, it doesn't work. Right, so I'm going to tell you a few ideas I have about time travel uh, and how these kind of paradoxes can be avoided. So, first of all, let me explain to you what my understanding of time is. Time is a measure of motion. Like in, a, in the hands of a clock, you can see the hands are moving at a certain speed. That's all time is. Time measures motion. Uh, if there's no motion, there's no time. Now, my first idea of time travel, and you're probably going to kick me for, for saying this because it's, it's kind of a, a really simple idea that everybody knows but they don't think of it as time travel. And that is everyday time travel. What I mean is, if I take the time now, the time now, you can see I've traveled forward in time. I traveled a few seconds in time. Okay. Now, of course, what we can do is we can speed that up by freezing a person, for instance. But if we want to go a bit more science fiction, we have to try and travel backwards in time, and that's where the problems come in. So, let me explain what people think about what time is. My opinion is the only time, well, the only point in time that actually exists is now. Okay, uh, other people have this idea, and I'm told that Einstein believed this, but I don't know if that's true, that time is in fact a dimension. In order to understand what dimensions are, I'm going to do a few drawings for you. So, if we think of what one dimension is, right, one dimension is something like this, a line, uh, infinite in length, and what I'm going to do is, in order to explain this in a way that is more understandable, I'm going to break this line up. So, instead of it being a just a continuous line, I'm going to say it's a bunch of blocks. Okay. So we can see individual points on that line. Alright, so that's one dimension. Two dimensions would then look like this. Alright, so we've got dimension going that way, dimension going that way. So what I did in order to create two dimensions is I took an exact duplicate of the one dimension and I repeated an infinite number of times. To create three dimensions one can draw it going that way and that gives us the cube. Right? Three-dimensional cube. Okay, so how does one draw four dimensions? take the same idea as converting from one dimension to two dimension, which is you take that same thing and you repeat it an infinite number of times. Okay, so there's your fourth dimension. Three dimensions being repeated an infinite number of times. So this could, could be called time. Time. Right, now let's say we wanted to time travel on this. Quite simple, we could jump from there to there. Okay, 
Now, let me just draw this again in a different way. Let's say each of these blocks res represents a three-dimensional universe on the timeline. Okay. Maybe each of these is a day. So when I travel a few days back in time, I can jump from, say, say this is now, I can jump a few days back in time to there. Okay, now there's two possibilities from this point. If I'm at this point, either what happens is the timeline skews so that this timeline continues to exist and another one gets created. And I'm not actually on this timeline, I've become transferred to this timeline. Alright, so I jump to this timeline, this timeline continues as normal, and uh, there's no problems because even though I'm back in the past, I'm not affecting the future. The future can carry on as it always has. Now, let's assume that this didn't skew. Okay, so time carries on as always. Now, you might think that because I'm back in time, I'm going to affect what happens now. But it doesn't affect what happens now. Because this only affects things as the speed of time. So let's say this is a Monday, right? It'll have to wait until Tuesday to affect this block. By this point, now, the present time has moved on to the next day. And so the changes that happened in the past never actually catch up to the changes that happen in the future. Okay, so that solves that problem. Now, I don't actually believe this. How I see time as happening is, if this is time, and we're moving into the future, um, let's say this is now, because the future hasn't happened yet, what I believe happens is every time you go from one day to the next or from one moment to the next, the previous moment is completely destroyed. So that only now exists. So you cannot actually go back in time. Nevertheless, if you could, there's another time theory based on this model, which is the time theory in quantum leap which is that you can travel in time as long as it's within your time, within your life. So, let's say this is your entire life, and you could move backwards and forwards within it. Let's say you could jump backwards and forwards within your own life. So, this is, let's say, at this point you are five years old, and at this point you're 20. Right, so at the age of 20 you have memories of everything in the past. At five years old you have memories of everything in the past. So if you were to jump from 20 to age 5, you would have the memories that you had in the past, and that would mean that you wouldn't know that you were 20 and you would actually think that you were 5 years old and you would be 5 years old which means that we could actually be bouncing around in time, within our own timeline within our own life without actually knowing it okay, those are my theories on time I hope I haven't bored you terribly Yes.